Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, aircraft landing at the wrong airport. How does it happen? Is it dangerous? And what can pilots do to make sure it doesn't happen? Stay tuned. Right guys, before I start this video, I want to say a huge thank you and a big shout out to all of the members of my Patreon crew. You guys know who you are, you're extremely important to the channel. My Patreons are helping me to preview my videos, look for mistakes that I might have made, help me choosing thumbnails and uh, also, you know, sometimes what kind of titles to put on the videos. Basically, they're involved in making sure that I deliver quality content on the channel. If you guys are interested in joining my Patreon crew, well then go down, there's a link here in the description of the video. And once again, a huge thank you to you guys. British Airways flight headed for Dusseldorf in Germany has landed in Edinburgh by mistake after the flight paperwork <laughs> was submitted incorrectly. The passengers only realized the error when the plane landed and the, wel <laughs> the welcome to Edinburgh announcement was made. <laughs> Let's go so, the reason that I'm making this video is because yesterday a um, a WDL flight operated on behalf of British Airways uh, took off from London City Airport and landed in Edinburgh instead of Düsseldorf. Right? There was a huge shout on social media. Obviously, I've gotten a lot of questions about how this can happen, whether or not it's dangerous, did they have enough fuel, things like that. So what I will do in this video is I'm going to try to explain why this happened, if that was dangerous or not. And at the end, I'm also going to talk about when this actually is very dangerous, why pilots might choose to land at the wrong airport, and what we can do to make sure that it doesn't happen. So make sure you stay tuned. So anyway, um, yesterday, uh, this, this um, WDL flight, it's a German airline who flew on behalf of, of uh, British Airways, um, had a morning flight, and um, they, um, they set everything up. They asked for, for clearance. They got a clearance to Edinburgh, which they were expecting. Uh, they might or might not have been rostered to fly actually down to Düsseldorf instead. I don't know exactly how their rosters look. But in any case, the flight plans they had, the air traffic control clearance they had, probably the briefing they all did in the crew room said Edinburgh. Okay? So uh, they might or might not have done an initial PA. That depends a little bit on whether or not they were under time pressure. Maybe they had a slot to depart from London City. Maybe um, they did a very early PA. Or maybe, since this being a German airline, uh, there was a little bit of an accident and people were tired in the morning and didn't really pay much attention. Right? We don't know exactly what happened here. Uh, but in any case, the, the crew flew the um, flight plan route. They went into the approach in, in Edinburgh, they landed in Edinburgh, and they made a welcome and PA to Edinburgh. And that's when all of the passengers started looking at each other. It's like, are you going to Edinburgh? I'm, I'm going to Düsseldorf. And they soon realized that all of the passengers on board were intended to fly from London City to Düsseldorf and not to Edinburgh, which is a completely different direction, completely different country, everything. Now, the question here obviously is, how can this happen? Uh, and the answer is that this is a organizational error. Right? There's probably been a, uh, a mistake made um, either between British Airways and WDL or most likely by the flight planning team at WDL. So the crew had previously done similar rotations where they had flown from uh, Düsseldorf to London City, from London City up to Edinburgh and back to London City. So this is, some, this is a route that they were used to flying. They actually flew up to Edinburgh and back just the day before. So it is a very high possibility that WDL just filed a flight plan up to Edinburgh by mistake. Okay, um, Whether or not the cabin crew was aware of this was because this is the reason why cabin crew normally checks all of the... Uh, the boarding cards. Now you know how annoying it can be in some airlines where you need to show your boarding card at the gate and the boarding card at the air aircraft. Well, this is the reason for that. And if they didn't have that procedure, it's possible that they just welcomed the passengers on. PA might or might not have been done. The crew thought they were going to Edinburgh, so there's nothing crazy wrong there. And then only after landing, this mistake was made. So, very embarrassing, quite funny. Um, obviously, if there was people on board who had something important to do in Düsseldorf that was time critical, that's not funny at all. But from an organizational point of view, it's a little bit funny. The passengers only realized the error when the plane landed and the, wel <laughs> the welcome to Edinburgh announcement was made. Is it dangerous though? No, 
Not at all. Um, the crew operated a flight plan which had all of the fuel for Edinburgh, which had all of the clearances for Edinburgh. The flight planning was correct. All of that was correct. Okay, so there was no nothing dangerous at all with this. It's just uh, embarrassment for the companies that were involved. The crew, like I said, they thought they were going to Edinburgh. They were surprised when the passengers said they were going somewhere else. So that indicates that this crew had full uh, operational situation awareness, even though the company might not have had it. All right? So that, that kind of ends all of that discussion. Exactly how it happened, you know, it's likely that we will never know. It was most likely an individual mistake made somewhere, right? But it's not a dangerous one. Now, there are times where pilots have landed at the wrong airport where it becomes dangerous. And basically, any time that pilot loses their situational awareness, as in think they're doing one thing, but what they're actually doing is another, that is always dangerous because we work on having full situational awareness, being able to plan ahead and being able to come up with contingency procedures in case something doesn't happen. And all of that goes out, goes down the tube if you're actually, for example, go doing an approach into a runway that is different from what you think you are. And how can this happen then? Well, this has been well documented. Several, several cases within the last decade where pilots have, uh, have gone in and ended up actually landing at the wrong airport. This generally has to do with badly planned and badly executed visual approaches. So a visual approach is something that a pilot do when they decide that they have the landing runway and the whole area in sight and they decide to instead of flying a you know, potentially quite lengthy and complicated uh, instrument arrival procedure, they just tell air traffic control we have the runway in sight and they go in to do this visually uh, executed maneuver where they basically just fly towards the airport, configure um, at different distances from the, um, from the airport and they come down and land, okay? This is very common. It's extremely common in, in places where you might not have radar coverage, for example, and uh, the alternate is doing a very long and lengthy arrival procedure, while if you see it visually, you can just come in and maybe shave off 10 minutes of flight time and a load of fuel. But the problem here is that sometimes, in some places, you have airports which have very similar airports close to them. It tends to be one maybe main uh, civilian airport and then it could be a military airport that might not be on our charts or it could be a private airport that has similar runway directions but a completely different you know, runway length and runway width and things like that. But the problem with that is that you have you know, two runways which are very close to each other. And we have something that we're aware of, a, a, a kind of bias that humans always face, which is called confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the way that we humans tend to, once we have made a decision about something, we tend to search for clues that confirm our initial idea. So instead of, like a proper scientist, always question your, your decision making, you instead try to find things that confirm it. So if you go in, like in this example, and you see one runway, and then you think this is the one I'm going to land at, you start looking for visual cues, maybe there are lakes, maybe there are you know, terrain features that confirms it, and your brain says, yeah, great, you're doing a great job, you're, doing, you're going exactly where you are. While there might be a ton of different things saying, no, there shouldn't be a lake there, you know, the mountain range should be much further down route, this, this is, doesn't make sense, but our brain, cognitively, disregards that and con concentrates only on the thing that confirms it, even though there might be, you know, much more things, and there should be much more things that are showing that this is incorrect, All right? So this has happened, like I said, on a few occasions. There is uh, one example of a South Southwest Airlines flight that was supposed to go to Branson National in the US and ended up landing at uh, Graham Clark Downtown Airport instead. All right, these two airports are only about six nautical miles apart. But there's a huge difference between the two. While the uh, Branson National is about 2,200 meters long, the uh, Graham Clark Downtown Airport is about 1,140 meters long. So, a very big difference in landing distance, right? This aircraft came in, landed, 
noticed that it was a very short runway, slammed the brakes, managed to get the aircraft to a stop within the available runway distance. Passengers were complaining about being a very rough landing and they were then bust to their original destination. Right. So that was an example. Everyone was fine, no injuries, still an extremely serious incident. Um, air traffic control might or might not have radar, but you know, given that these airports were very, very close apart, maybe they didn't see on the radar screen how that these air aircraft were aligned on the wrong runway. And in any case, once the, um, once the pilot calls runway in sight, the air traffic control is likely to take the pilot's word for it and not monitor it that closely. All right. There have been other, uh, other examples that are very similar to this, uh, but there has also been examples where there's been a very unfortunate loss of life. And actually, just a few months back in January 2019, a uh, Saha Airlines uh, flight, that's an Iranian state-owned airline, landed uh, in a runway close to um, Bishkek uh, in Iran. The problem was that they didn't land at the Bishkek runway. They actually landed in uh, in an airport called Fat, which has similar runway directions. Fat Air, um, Airport has runway 31 left, which they landed on, and the uh, Bishkek runway is runway 30. It's only one runway there. But the difference in runway distance is huge. So while uh, Bishkek has 3,660 meter of runway, the uh, Fat runway is only 1,070 meters. Okay. So what ended up happening is that 707 landed. Uh, they didn't notice. Even when they landed, they didn't notice that they were on the wrong airport until the runway suddenly just stopped. They ran through a, uh, a perimeter wall of the airport and into a, um, um, an area of houses where the houses were torched. The um, uh, air aircraft was engulfed in flames and 15 out of the 16 people on board died. It's a, it was a cargo flight, so there wasn't more passengers than that. So how can we stop that from ever happening? Well, there's a few things that has, to, that has to be done. First of all, whenever we do a visual approach, and now I'm talking for the procedures in my airline, a visual approach has to be treated with respect. It has to be briefed as a non-precision approach. And in my airline, a non-precision approach is, has something called a double brief attached to it. That means that the pilot flying is briefing the pilot monitoring exactly what he or she is going to do when they're going to configure, what kind of nav aids they're going to be using, if any, and what to look for, what the threats of are. Okay? Including in this briefing, uh, when we're flying into airports that have similar runways around, we have something called an, a, um, um, an airport brief. In the airport brief, among the threats, there will be stated that do not mistake this airport for that airport. So only by briefing that there is another airport around, you can break the confirmation bias because you will now start to question yourself. When you're on a visual approach and you look at the airport, you will ask, okay, so there was supposed to be another airport here as well that looks the same. So you'll start looking for it. And you know, all of a sudden, your brain is not just confirming your initial bias. It's actually looking for other clues and that will hopefully stop it in its track. So a proper briefing at the early stages when you, you know, when you have plenty of time is essential. It, you know, in our airline, we're not allowed to do visual approaches unless we've done a brief. We can't just decide to go visually. We have to have briefed it before. That's number one. The second thing is the role of the pilot monitoring. The pilot monitoring is supposed to be constantly monitoring what the aircraft is doing. So if there is another, um, another airport close by, he or she should be looking out and you should be looking for it to make sure that, yeah, we are on the right track and should be using all of the available nav aids, right? And this comes into point number three, which is don't just go visually. Back it up with all of the nav aids and all of the, the sources of information that you have. On the 737, for example, we have our navigation display. Now that has already, from the beginning of the flight, been programmed with the destination that we're supposed to go to. So if we're looking at the navigation display and you see that you're off the program track, well, that is a clue in itself that something is wrong, all right? That together with the fact that we have been, you know, setting up our instrument landing system, the ILS system, to, to show where we're supposed to be, that means that we have a lock and a glide slope indication. So even if we're flying it visually, looking out at the runway, 
we're still being able to go in and verify our instrumentation to make sure that we are indeed going not only towards the correct runway, but that we are at the correct altitude, that we have the correct speed, everything like that. So never take away things like flight directors, things like Navate. Use whatever aid you have in order to aid you to get to where you're supposed to go. This is extremely important, guys. It, it's not macho to disconnect everything and just show, look, look how well I can do this without any help. help. No. That's not what the passengers are paying you for. The passengers are paying you to get as safely as possible to their destination. However, you can do that. If you want to try to do that, you can rent your own aircraft and go out and fly visual approaches without any aids yourself. Right? I want to really emphasize this. Good. Um, so, to summarize, proper briefing, pilot monitoring, monitor the situation, Use all the available aids to your help in order to get you as safely as possible down. That's all I had, guys. Uh, I hope you have questions about this. As always, you can contact me on my well, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But what I really want is to discuss this with you inside of the Mentor Aviation app. So come in there now. Just tag at Mentor and you can talk directly to me or all of the other engineers, air traffic controllers or professional pilots or pilot students that are already in the app. We're over 4,000 people using the app every day now. It's growing rapidly and I am going to start adding things like forums and all other nice features very soon to the app. So stay tuned. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. I'm going to go and take Pachi and possibly Molly out for a, uh, for a walk, depending. Molly is not much for walks. But I hope you're having a great time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Pachi, Molly.